I'm here with Raphael Francis with Siena, and we're talking today about the um, evolution of the transport network around 5G. Hi, good to, good to see you again. Yeah, great to be here again, Sterling. It is great. A uh, lot's going on. Um, what do you see as Siena is obviously a transport company. You're heavily involved in 5G these days. What do you see as the role of, of the transport network in the evolution of 5G? Yeah, so we're, we've been working with operators globally to you know help them with their 5G rollouts, and and what we're seeing is that um, you know operators are going to take a phased approach to deploying 5G, and there's a lot of different kind of RAN architecture approaches they're taking, and they might vary by you know the band of spectrum or radio technology, where they're you know moving from uh, more closed to open RAN architectures from. Um, you know, physical to virtual RAN architectures, uh, you know, from distributed to centralized RAN architectures. And we believe, you know, it's important that we're enabling that, that 5G transport foundation to help them, depending on where they are across those different phases of evolution. And it's important that the transport network be flexible and support, you know, combinations of things like front hall, mid hall, back hall. So that's really what we've kind of built into the portfolio to help them with those those phase deployments as they evolve over time. Kind of the yeah. overarching area of, of X-Hall transport, including front hall, mid hall, back hall, there's a, obviously a role of transport in, in exactly. each, each of those segments. Yeah, and you know, those may, those will occur in the same network in many instances, either at an aggregation point or in some cases even at a macro radio site where maybe they, you know, of course started with LTE, but then they deploy 5G narrowband and 5G midband and maybe aggregate millimeter wave. And so you have these different flavors of radio technologies that may result in, you know, different variants of that architecture. And the transport has to be ready for whatever's thrown at it in addition to being able to support the timing and synchronization, you know, which is so critical in 5G. Yeah. The um, front hall is, let's say if it's heating up, but you know, it's we've been talking about it for years, but yeah. we're definitely getting a sense yeah. this year that their our deployments are, are, are very real. There's sort of a stepped approach where a, a lot of the early deployments we're seeing are more fiber based or WDM based, right. with a, but a, a plan towards, for, for many of them, an evolution to a packet front hall. And Sienna is obviously very, invested in packet technologies. Um, you, you built up your portfolio more and more. What is needed, and kind of just talk us through what, what you would see as the evolution of front hall to a, to a packet front hall, and maybe some of the pros and, and the challenges of, of doing that. Sure, yeah, and we definitely see more adoption of, of CRAN, like you, like you said, over time. And I, I think a couple factors are driving things towards more Ethernet or packet front hall. For one, you know, radios are now, you know, being delivered with native Ethernet interfaces, with eSIPRI or ORAN interfaces. You have operators wanting to virtualize the RAN as they centralize the RAN. So that means, you know, deploying an Ethernet-based infrastructure to deliver traffic into those, those servers in a, in a CRAN hub or an edge cloud environment. Um, and the other thing is that with you know, these, these um, higher capacities, I think some of the traditional WDM mechanisms of doing this are, are not, you know, maybe scaling as well in addition to the factors I mentioned. Um, and so packet front hall helps to do that, right? Reduce, consolidate the amount of fiber that you need out to a radio site. Now, of course, that means it has to be done with a very, you know, high level of performance and very low latencies, right? And so front hall is very latency sensitive. And so we've proven that technology works. We've deployed the technology. We've partnered with RAN vendors and, you know, done testing and compared it to, um, you know, other front hall mechanisms such as WDM. And we've, you know, proven that you can get the right level of performance while achieving cost savings, you know, operational benefits because the packet front hall gives you better visibility into to OA and M and things like that in the network than the other technologies would. So a number of operational benefits too. Yeah, on the pro side, you you would say it's certainly more efficient than than running you know multiple dark fibers. On on the yeah. challenges side, as you indicated, the performance needs to not take a hit as you as you're running in the packet network, and that's one of the. Key. That's right, and you so you have to design the solution to to support that performance from a latency perspective, and you also have to support the the mixes, even though. As I've said, radios will have Ethernet interfaces. There's still a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, radios that that have CIPRI, and so you have to be able to support that mix yes. and be able to carry CIPRI over packet as well, which we can do in addition to the eCIPRI and ORAN 
But yeah, those are definitely some of the key factors. Yeah, it's well, one of the other things we've learned over the years of looking at this area. It's not just about East Cipri. In fact, most of the conversations are around how do you handle yeah, Cipri. It's not going away. Yeah, no, you know, not at all. Time real not soon. at all. Um, so, what you know, we talked a bit about Front Hall. Siena has a holistic approach to, to the transport network. What else is needed? Technology, or or even you know, really any other areas that you want to address? Yeah, we. I mean, we think about it from an end to end, you know, solution perspective. Um, you know, we're we're. We're obviously carrying a lot of traffic from radio sites and, and networks in the U.S. and globally, but you know beyond that, we we provide a lot of aggregation. We provide obviously you know optical coherent optical transport as well. That's critical in in metro and as you get into the the core networks. We do a lot in, from an automation perspective. You know with our with our Blue Planet software, being able to um, you know support things like 5G inventory and analytics and um, you know an orchestration things like network slicing so for us it, it's about an end-to-end -end solution now we also recognize we don't provide all the pieces of the puzzle you know we're not a, a radio company I was so say, you're not a radio vendor no so, yeah. we have an ecosystem of different partners that we'll work with um, smaller radio vendors larger radio vendors like Samsung that we've partnered with mm -hmm. I mean we'll interoperate with Pretty much any radio vendor out there, but sometimes that collaboration helps to do things like de-risk deployments for operators when it comes to things like adopting Open RAN and uh, and and deploying things like private 5G networks, where you know that's often a, an ecosystem of different vendors, and we can help with things like the system integration as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, excellent. Well, um, it's an exciting time to be in optics covering yeah. uh, 5G. So um, wish you luck and. Thanks. Good talking to you. Yeah, you thanks. as well. All right, Sterling. thanks, Raphael. Thank you.